Hey everybody, it's Al with Bobcat. So today I wanted to take a look at the Milturn software and setting up your uh, coordinate system. Okay, so this is the model that we're working on here. And uh, what we need to do is to create a new job and to set our zero. So just like in milling, with Milturn you can position your zero on the part. So you want to pay attention to a few things and Let's just go ahead and get started. So we're going to do a mill turn job. We're going to run the stock wizard here, um, which is fine. And then we're now at the origin page. Okay. So I'm in a top view right now. You don't need to be in a top view, but um, and your part, my part is running uh, parallel to the x axis the world coordinate system. So when I rotate this, and the way that I rotate this is I smash my mouse wheel and I do a rotation. You can see I have this uh, gnomon in the center here. And we have X running this direction, Y running this direction, and Z running this direction. And what we need to do is we need to make it so that the Z negative is going this way. All right. Now the way that we do that is there's these buttons over here, X, Y, and Z direction, and then there's a swap button which flips the direction that it is. So we use these in order to set uh, wh where our axis is or how we're aligning our origin to our part. So as an example, if I want this to be the X axis, I click on X direction and then I click on that point there and you can see that's now the X direction. Okay. Now over here where this uh, orange and blue arrow is, if I click that button, you can see that it will swap the X direction, whether it's going to the right or whether it's going to the left. Okay. Now when you're aligning a coordinate system, you really only need to align two, the X and Y going in the right direction, um, and then the third one comes along. So sometimes this can be a little confusing to new users, even to myself, you know, so we're going to set this as our X, you know, our Z direction. We want our Z direction to be going along this line here. And I just hit S on my keyboard to toggle my shading. I'm going to move my mouse over this line. I'll click it. And now you can see we have the Z going in that direction. Now I'm going to swap the D Z direction so it's going the other way. And you can see that swap the X as well. Now I'm going to swap the X direction and then now we get it all aligned. So really um, sometimes it's just the more you do it, just picking the correct you know, X and Y or X and Z really <clears throat> makes it quite a bit easier. So let me, let me show you what I mean. Let's go ahead and cancel out of that real quick. Okay. We're going to go, let me delete my job. So I'll start over. I'm going to do a new job, mill turn job, right? Run my stock wizard. Okay. So now I'm going to set uh, my coordinate system. Okay. So what I'm going to do this time is I'm going to set my Y direction to here. And just by setting my Y direction to there, that brings the Z and the X in the correct location. Okay. Because again, the axes are connected with each other. So, you know, I only had to click one button instead of having to click two or three buttons. So again, <clears throat> it's not difficult to do. It just takes a little bit of practice. Hopefully that will help clear that up for you. Now, the the axis that you set up, you know, matters because when you're programming your job, your X and Z axis, this is where you lay out your turning geometry. Okay, so I'm matching the normal layout in Bobcad. Normally when you're doing turning, you do it in this orientation. It doesn't have to be though. It's just when you're creating geometry, you want to make sure that you're in the proper plane or you have a plane set up to create that geometry. And that's the other topic I wanted to cover real quick. Um, if you're working off a solid and you need to do two axis turning routines, those are based off a wireframe at this time. Okay, So you need to take your model and convert it to wireframe. One of the easiest ways to do this is with view and then section view. And what section view will do is create a cross section of your part at that uh, plane that you're in. And you can change the plane that you're in as well. Um, 
the thing what's important to notice is that the model came up pink here which is showing we're getting a nice intersection if it doesn't show up pink you need to change the plane that you're in you know rotate it to you know 90 degrees or go to a front plane uh, but if it shows up pink here we'll be able to get wireframe no problem so I'm gonna just create a new layer make it active generate wireframe and hit cancel and now what I've done is I've created the wireframe profile for that part you know I don't need both sides of it I can remove one side of it here and delete that and this will give me my profile to do my turning routines okay so just as a recap we set our coordinate system and using our coordinate system we have the ability to set where our X and Z is going to be. We can snap it to the part. Um, you know, you need to align your X and Z so it aligns to the part properly. And you can use your X, Y, and Z directions to align. And then you also have your arrows to swap which way it's facing. If you, you know, are conscious of what you're trying to do, in this example, it was easier just to align the Y. Uh, where the X and Z would go where we needed to needed it to be okay so real quick go through that a couple of times I'm sure it'll get uh, easier and easier for you every time the other topic that we talked about is uh, getting wireframe off a solid for turning uh, in this example we have a solid model we need the wireframe there's a number of methods to do this but uh, one of the newer features that we offer is the section view and the section view allows you to generate wireframe from the intersection of uh, a UCS and the part model okay uh, if you guys have any questions comments or feedback please reply back to the Facebook the YouTube or whatever thread this video may be posted in uh, otherwise uh, if you like the video let's get a thumbs up if you have any comments comment below and uh, until then uh, we'll see you in the next one thank you so much guys bye now